So today we're going to revisit the player and particularly focus on the camera rig and how we experience the game visually. And so I also added a sight to help aim, but I thought that moving around and having the camera kind of pan gave a little bit more depth perception to where enemies actually were and made the game a little bit more fluid. So let's go ahead and take a look at the player since all the changes are really in the player. Uh, we'll start with the nodes and then get into the script. I'll explain most of these once we actually get into the script, but in the camera rig, we first will be talking about the different positions. So I placed a bunch of position 3Ds in the camera rig, and I'll show you where I put those. If you can see behind, there's these dots here, basically, and that's where the camera is going to try to go to when we change direction. I also put a ray cast that's pointing down, and I'll explain that again later about how if it gets too close to the ground, I don't want the camera to actually go into the ground, so we will prevent that from happening. And then the sight that I added at the front here is going to be, again, two mesh instances, and I just made them planes because I only need one half, or I don't need them to render on the back side or anything, so it's just easy to put a, a plane. I rotated them 90 degrees, and then I added a material to them, which is just a transparent green or yellowish, and I also built a red transparent shader to put into the override, material override. And we don't technically need this in the inspector right now because we're going to use it in code, but you will have to save this material into your files. That way we can set it in code later. So basically, we'll have the material be the starting color, and we will change it or use the material override to turn it red when there is a enemy in our sights. And we're going to check to see if the enemy's in our sights with this raycast pointing forward. Uh, I haven't decided how long I actually want to make this raycast, but it's just pointing straight forward right through the sights to see if there actually is an enemy, and we'll turn the sights red. So like I said, all this is really taken care of in the script. Um, one last thing I'll mention is just a personal preference of mine. I took the the muzzles where the bullets are coming from, and I moved them towards the center so it looks more like the original Star Fox. Shooting from the sides of the ship was just a little bit awkward and difficult to hit things, so I just moved them both to the center. So we're just going to go through the whole script, and it's pretty long, so hang in there, but I'll try to explain all the parts that are necessary. So again, we've done this a few times with the signals at the top. This is all the same as before. We're just going to be firing our bullets and the ready to shoot to time out our spacing. Now I'm keeping track of whether I'm turning right or left or going up or down. So I'm just keeping track of my speeds here. Uh, this is how fast I move from right to left and up and down the strafe speed. I wanted that to be quicker because I just wanted to be more responsive. And then the base speed, I'm keeping track of the forward speed and the base speed separately because I want to add a boost to the forward speed. And then I will be keeping track of the rotation of my ship. Uh, and I will actually be using degrees to keep track of this. So we're going to start them all out at zero. I'll explain these variables in just a minute when we get down to when I really am setting them. This is just the starting point. Um, and this is the, the material that I was talking about for the site that you will have to have be the red. So we're going to connect the game to the fire bullets and this is all the logic for just keeping the ship aligned how I wanted it. So we're going to get input first. So let's pop down there. So we're going to get input and we will just use the basic up, down, uh, left and right and we're going to keep track of which way we are rotating up, down, left or right. I'm actually doing my rotation and my movement separately. So I will keep track of how far I want to rotate, but the movement actually 
doesn't have anything to do with the direction that I'm rotated or anything. I'm just going to manually do that with my movement guide. Here are my rotation degrees that I will be setting each time. And I have to add 180 to the Y, otherwise I'll be going the wrong way. And like I said, if you press shift in my game, I'm going to have the, the ship go quicker. And then this is the same shoot function that I've used in the past. So we're going to deal with all the rotation here. And we're going to, as if we are turning, we're going to add to it. If we're not turning, we're going to work our way back towards zero. Now, I added a little bit of slack in the rising and the falling and the left and right, but not in the rotation, so the barrel roll type. I want to level out all the way, but I found it easier to aim if I actually just allowed the ship to be slightly pointed to the side, because every time that you try to shoot an enemy and you fly over there, you don't want to have to be directly in front of them to shoot at them. And it was just a little bit difficult to control to shoot them while you were turning. So if I added just a little bit of slack, like I said, I will only return to 5 and negative 5, which will leave 10 degrees of rotation that my ship can be pointing. It just makes it easier to actually hit the enemies, and I thought it felt a lot better. So I'm clamping all of the rotations to make sure that they don't go too far, because I don't want to actually be able to turn around. So, the, like I said, I do this for each one of them, and it's very important that you keep all the pluses and minuses and the greater than and equals correct. And then this line, we like always, we're just going to be moving forward at a consistent speed, unless we're boosting, and then we will move and slide. So in a previous video, I was grabbing the global transform at the beginning to lock the rig, but I just decided I'd just manual, or I'd just put it in hard code. Uh, so basically all this line is doing is you lock the camera so it can't move. It's always going to be pointing forward no matter what. This next section is the camera rig. And there's a few ideas here that get a little bit complicated, and um, I need to go through and actually change all of these camera rig cameras to a variable and the only reason why I haven't done it is I was also going to do some testing to see if it actually does make a difference if it's faster. Uh, I was going to use the profiler and check it out uh, but I wanted to get this video out before the weekend so I just haven't bothered with that yet. So the first new idea that I haven't really talked about is concatenation of strings. So basically, we're going to put either lower or upper or and add right or left at the end. So if you remember, when we look at our player, we have all of these upper left, upper right, lower left, and there's no spaces between any of these, which is important when you're doing this in the script. Uh, so we're going to decide if we're going up, if we're going down, and so on, and we will move the camera to the appropriate spot. The camera rig translation is going to equal to, we're going to lerp from its current location, and we're going to go to its new location, which is going to be getting the node, like I showed you in the tree, and we're going to concatenate the two strings together, so camera position one, either upper or lower, to camera pos and camera position 2, either right and left, and we're going to get that translation, and we are going to lerp to it a very small amount at a time. So this number at the end is kind of like a slurp last time I talked about. It's a number that's lower than 1 or lower. If you put a 1, it will go there instantly. If you put a 0.5, it will go half of the way. But it's kind of like the idea of... If you move halfway towards a spot, you will never technically get there, but you'll get really close pretty quickly. If you put a very small number like this, you can smoothly move to the location that you want. Now, this number, if anything, is the one I think you should play with the most, just so you can really visually see what happens. Like I said, the number has to be 1 or lower, but definitely play around with that and just see how much that can affect your game, because 
That's probably the most important number to understand when using LERPs. It's pretty easy to understand the starting position, where you want to go to, but I think this number at the end seems to catch people a lot. So before I said we locked the global transform and the rotation of the camera rig, which we did. I probably should actually move this line down a little bit. But uh, we're going to now change the local transform to make it look at the little crosshair or the sights that I have. Basically, if it goes to the upper right or to the right side, I want it to turn and look down a little bit to the bottom left. That way you can see the ship still and what's in front of you and it just gives a little bit of rotation that and that i think is really necessary for getting depth perception and so uh we're going to again use quaternions like we did in moving the enemies around but we're going to get a desired rotation we're going to have the camera position look at where the sights are and then we will have to tell what the up direction is. Then we're going to get the quaternion this, and slowly turn the camera to the desired rotation. Now, I'm not actually slowly doing it. I'm doing it all in one go. And th again, this is one of those numbers you should play around with. Uh, I don't know if I want one, but again, it has to be one or lower. And it will decide how quickly or slowly you actually get that rotation to happen. And then we actually have to set it to that quaternion, but we cannot just set it to A. We have to get the basis of A because you can't use quaternions directly into a transform, or you have to translate it back to a basis. Just like this comment says, we're going to turn the site red if we hit an enemy. And this is a simple raycast, just like how you use them in 2D or any other way. So if that raycast is colliding, we will set the material override to that and to that material. Uh, the only reason why I did that is it's easier to get to the material override. Um, I don't know if this is exactly how you're supposed to use material overrides, but it seems to work like I want it to. And if the material override is empty, it will just revert back to the previous material, uh, or the material that's in the mesh. So it'll start out that light yellowish green that I had, and then if it is colliding, then it will switch. So the last thing that I added here was I wanted to check to see if the camera was too close to the ground. Like I said at the beginning of the video, if you just use this system. If you comment this all out and you run the game, you'll see pretty quickly what I'm talking about. You you you're just too close. You can't even see what's going on, and you're you're going into the into the ground, and it's just. I mean, this isn't a game. If we uncomment this, it it just never lets you get that low. What's happening is I am shooting a raycast again down from where the camera is and if it's colliding with the ground i will get the position that it's colliding and remember when you set the raycast you have to turn it on but then you also have to set the collision correctly now i have it casting to negative 10 which subtract the ground position from the camera position and then I will set the lower left and the lower right spot that the camera is going to be going to. So these are the position 3Ds that are on the bottom. And we're going to uh, set that to, uh, th this is a variable I have at the very top in case I want to change it later. It's negative 10 right here. So I want it to be negative 10 unless the ground is closer than 10. So I will measure the distance to the ground and subtract that from 10, and we will add that to the default height. And that will prevent you from actually going into the ground. This is what you end up with. And then I'll look at this guy so you can see it turn red.